We're delighted to have Shane Murphy in the studio with us. Shane, you've been in, you've been on with us before. Yes, I'm very yeah. sure. Are we going with performance coach, sports scientist, fitness coach? What's your? Uh, it's just preferred? a title. I don't really care. Yeah, yeah, yeah performance yeah. coach is probably more accurate, but I don't. It's a title. So for people unfamiliar with your with your story, or maybe didn't hear the previous chat, I know you were on with Jaron Owen before. Um, what exactly is it that you do? You've been working with with the likes of Manchester City and, and currently the Scottish national team as well. So what what does the the job entail? Yeah, I, quite, I ask myself that question every day, really, to be honest, because it's changed so much. I, I left, it was very, very concrete in my mind what I was doing at Man City. I was a strength and conditioning coach, a sports scientist, and then I, I left there and I set my own company. So now I find myself as a consultant with City Football Group, which is responsible for the development of Manchester City's loaned players who are not quite good enough for the first team, but mm. too good for the academy. So I'm responsible there for their development. And that's a whole host of a conversation. And then uh, with the Scotland team, is preparing them for um, all the games they have in preparation for like European Championships or whatever we've got coming up. And then I think what you've probably noticed a lot in what's happening in the industry now is uh, footballers are getting external guys to help them out. So LeBron James did it in the NBA, and some people, and Ronaldo has done it in, in the Premier League, and so on. Is that that's cascaded down to other individuals? So I find myself as the team behind the team of certain individuals that play in the Premier League and, and the Scottish Premiership. What a crap up recently I know that you were involved with the Scottish setup Steve Clark's setup when um, Scotland played Georgia recently and the yeah. pitch gets a bit waterlogged and then the rain starts coming down and I think Scott McTominay is standing in the, in the tunnel at one point looking down the tunnel and the Georgian players didn't want to come back out so uh, you probably had to be kicked into gear at that point where there's a delay players muscles are getting tight yeah. how, how do you cope with a situation like that where all of a sudden you're, you're landed with something that you weren't really expecting pre-kickoff yeah exactly it was such a weird moment or a cool moment as well like it was a quite a challenge because I think in, in normally speaking <coughs> you have just fairly binary what you do you warm up the team and then you know X equals Y and everything happens kind of like uh, um, periodically but that, in that moment call off after six minutes never happened before players didn't know what was happening players were talked about oh it's going to be postponed the next day and they've all got plans to do whatever they need to do so they're they're emotional they're you know like reacting to it no one knows what's doing the, the kickoff is delayed every 15 minutes and you know it's, yeah, like you said you're you're trying to manage the physical you kind of low you're warming up you, I, I think we warmed up four times in that in that moment because it got it was actually an hour 40 minutes uh, after the kickoff, like where like, the game went on, so it was it was a quite a long delay, and it felt like that in the changing room because you also had Georgia who were trying to get the. It seemed like they weren't didn't want to play because they're one 0 down also, also, which doesn't help. Um, so yeah, it, it, but it was more about the mentality and keeping the team together because in that moment, what happens a lot of people is you hear this thing called cognitive decline, so they're not. 25 year old professional athletes at that moment they're 4 year old kids you know what I mean so yeah. they're, they're the kind of emotions are, are really high so it's just keeping the team focused keeping them in in, 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 in kind of in, in a plan I'd say because we were given oh you got 10 minutes to warm up and the players just wanted to go out and just do you know anything for 10 minutes but if you do that it's a long time to be standing around you know what I mean warming up you need a focus you need it so it was just kind of making sure it was a process and keeping them together and then you know kind of doing that but a lot of staff helped in that moment and some of the players are real leaders as well so they just took control of that like so you got the you got the skipper Andy Robinson he's just he's a natural born leader and he just kind of takes control of that situation as well so there was a lot of people helping out in that moment but it's certainly about just sticking to a process and just keeping the emotions intact it's funny, we were chatting to the Roscommon senior football boss, Davey Burke, who was in the studio yesterday, and was something he said that, that kind of struck me. It was they had obviously planned for the Connacht Championship, that opening game against against Mayo, and really focused on it. Mm. Then, they, then they win that game, of course. But he, he's almost, I think he was wondering out loud yesterday, did, did a focus on that in preparation for a, a certain date maybe hamper the, 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 the rest of the season that you know do you, do you get the workload right mm -hmm. later in the All-Ireland Championship you know are players tired and it's tough to find that balance and I guess there's there's the psychology and all that comes into this as well but uh, have you found that there is a, it can be difficult for teams to kind of find that balance and peak for a certain period and keep peaking at different yeah. points it's very, yeah because you can't always peak and football is this and, and uh, other sports are like this and, and GA is like this as well you got to peak every Saturday or every Tuesday you know mm -hmm. so you got um, say Olympic cycle you got to peak at four years so it's a bit more you know so yeah. how do you and if you look at the, another thing is like if you look at the team of the week every time in the Premier League it's never the same team so people are peaking you know there's, there's an undulating individuality to the peaking as well not everyone's peaking at the same time so the idea that a team peaks is probably mm -hmm. you know it's probably just something we talk about but it's not actually not the, you want your best players peaking at that time so it's a difficult thing to understand but the more you understand of players the more you understand of the individuals and having a goal and having a focus I think is the number one thing you know because there's so many things that factor into this 
this idea of peaking but in a group team like that it's always the individual so you don't just look at the the, the forest you try and then you look at the individual trees and you pick them out and you make sure that they're on the right plan they have their individual things intact and I think the psychology and the event will, 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 will get there if you, if you do that right I think you get the basics right I think there was a question it was a Philly McMahon was asked it recently someone had brought it up about you know who is fitter a Gaelic footballer or a, or a soccer player yeah, and, uh, yeah and I know it's, a, it's like you probably can't really compare them and I think Philly's point was they're just different body shapes they have like a Gaelic footballer has to be slightly bigger to take the big hits in the physicality of the mm-hmm. game whereas a soccer player probably as he said has bigger calves like you look at the likes of Jack Grealish because mm-hmm. of the, the athletic athleticism and, and, and kind of niftiness of soccer do you have an answer on that in terms of which which is the fittest or is it just one of those questions you can't you yeah. can't actually answer I think his first point about uh, you can't compare them mm. is, the, is the thing like they're so so unique they're so different there's so many things like you, it's a rabbit hole really it's a, you know to go down okay, um, really if you could try and compare I think it's but also the players within it like you've got players yeah like Jack Reilly who's got big calves or whatever but that's that's not the whole picture. Like you look at uh, Maris, same team, different side of the pitch, or same side if you want. Mm. Um, and you know, there's no comparison really. And, and the point, I think, the ultimate point you said, you can compare, and there is no one size that fits all. If you look at football, I, I, look, I'm not going to discuss about GA because it's not my remit, and I, I would never pretend to be an expert in that. But uh, football, football is definitely the one sport where you have, even in positionals, you have such a disparity between between yeah. profiles look at strikers over the, over the course history we could just name them out like Peter Crouch Michael Owen Dwight York Sergio Aguero you know we could get Torres we could keep going you know what I mean you could name, and, and you'd list them all in the room and you'd never say they're all strikers maybe there is um, um, a, a less of a discrepancy between uh, um, discrepancy between centre halves and maybe goalkeepers but even still at that you mm. look at you know we can name them right so I think football is that one sport that the profile is less important you know what I mean what it does maybe allude to is kind of how they play the game and what profile or what physicality they uh, helps them play the game they need to play mm-hmm. but yeah there's such a difference and yeah there's no profile and it's sort of the robustness sort of thing just, I like that so the robustness of say a GA player is sort of different to the, how we would consider robustness in, in an argument a robustness for a footballer yeah. because the robustness of a footballer is like it's not about muscle mass or size or anything like that it's like look at the games they have to play the amount of games a Premier League footballer like Kevin De Bruyne this year could have played 75 games mm. like that's an incredible amount of games you know it's too much it's way too much but still robustness is kind of a funny term it's very hard to kind of get clear clarity of what robustness means because does robustness mean how physically you know, strong you look or muscle mass or does it mean how many games you can get out in a season how injury prone are you that kind of thing so it's a it's so hard to talk about it because it's mm. such a you need like a whole podcast on it it's really grey area, yeah, yeah it's such a grey area but football is certainly one sport that there is such a variety of, of athletes slightly less uh, scientific question for Shane but the mention of Jack Grealish has me thinking about the homecoming celebrations does being a consultant get you a spot in the bus uh, no 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 no, not quite I can't, I can't claim any of that uh, unfortunately but um, I'll be over there next week so I'll, I'll see the trophies I might get a picture with him but uh, no I wasn't I wasn't invited that when you're watching uh, the like minute by minute sort of Jack Grealish celebrations and he turns up somewhere yeah. else having a few jars in him because yeah. uh, I know he addressed it didn't he after one of the England games he said oh like why am I getting asked about this of all the time I've been playing for like 11 months or 11 and a half mm. months give me a break are you um, what are your thoughts when all that is like it's a natural end of season letting off a bit of steam or could you mind yourself a bit um, I think it's individuals I think there's some players now that like back in the day and even I remember when I first started in the Premier League players would finish the season and get really unfit and just completely yeah. unwind now we see a kind of different cohort of players and, and maybe and Tony Strudwick made this argument he's a kind of a legendary S&C coach he worked with Man, Man United through the years but he made this point no, maybe we, they don't switch off enough you know so maybe there's an argument that they need to switch because most of these players finish the season and okay sometimes they have to keep working because they may have international duty we had it with some of our players that played in the championship that they wanted to keep them ticking over until they met up with this guy like Lyndon Dykes and, and, and Kenny McLean and those kind of players Mm-hmm. who finished championship early and they had an international duty so they had to keep continuing but you have it now with there's so many summer off season pre-season you know pre, pre, pre-season pre kind of um, camps we'll say so these players are looking after themselves all the time and whatever and I do think they need to unwind mm-hmm. and it's an individual thing but now it's it's so like um, blown up and talked about and the, the, the memes and all this kind of stuff you know he's just letting loose for a little bit and I was like I mean he's one to treble he's you know I, I think do it and if he's yeah. if he delivers 
next week, doesn't get injured, all that kind of stuff, then you know who's to say he's wrong. What advice have you got for the likes of us schleps who are sort of like uh, playing a little bit of whatever it is, like five aside or just yeah. is it totally uh, incomparable? We're more the Jack Grealish letting his hair loose. Friday <laughs> yeah, yeah, than, yeah. Uh, than Don't not, put me in the same bracket. You know? <laughs> Hold on a minute here. Well, you're probably a good target audience for this because Shane plays. Uh, you know, keeps his light under a bushel here, but he's like you Sunday know, Monaghan yeah. United's. One top, time, one towns, time. Yeah, top, yeah, yeah. Uh, top striker. Yeah. What, what advice or any advice for people who are just tuned in who like a bit of casual sport and would like to keep on top of that stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a few things. Like, I, I think the first thing to, to identify, and this is all age groups and all, all things, I think you have to identify what makes you a, a good player. You know what I mean? What makes you a bit better than everyone? Because I think there's this tendency for everyone to kind of get well rounded. And if you even look at the elite, right, and just take a note of their book, no elite footballer is without their problems of their game do you know what I mean there's, not, there's always something that doesn't make them a good player if you could just look at their characters of heading of tackling whatever it might be pick a player identify some weaknesses in them. they'll always have the weaknesses but it's the strengths and it's the things they can do that make them the player they are so I think you know, in an amateur level whatever whatever your super strength or could your super strength be I think you just need hone on that if you want to elevate yourself a little bit further I think it's having USP you know having a unique selling point about you that separates you from the rest because um, you know when you get to sort of amateur level everyone's kind of the same some players are a little bit better like but in the grand scheme of things there isn't like a superstar but say okay there might be a superstar relative to the other players around the pitch but the, the break away from that league to get up to the higher leagues or improve your game to another level you probably need to just separate yourself from the rest if you know what I mean and I think you do that by developing you know whether you're a good crosser or a good finisher or a good header just get better at that thing I think that would be the first thing from a technical point of view to uh, thing but then the, the physical side of things it's really interesting like people like in football do you remember when COVID happened and everyone was doing individual training and everyone got really fit like super, there was some 5k times gone out there mm-hmm. that were beat <laughs> world records right but everyone got really fit okay and then they came back to their environment to back playing football yeah. and the only metric that went up was injuries yeah. so they lost this kind of specificity of their training which is really really important so if you're doing condition and you're trying to get fitter for your game you always have to have the element of the game within it at some point yes okay 5k run and mass runs and all these kind of things do help to a point but there's a diminishing gain once you get past a certain fitness like if you're a if you're a footballer that's a good runner and then you keep running to get you know because that's your strength and you're going after that I would say you need to deviate from that it's kind of a counterintuitive point to my first point about the technical side of things but on the physical side of things you have to ensure that your training is somewhat specific to the game and I think that those two things if you if you get those right I think they would they would help your game massively yeah, that's a good start you're taking notes over there <laughs> let's <Literally> metal notes <laughs> here constantly. whatever help you can get yeah, you got, talk about the big lad up front Shane that's what you oh, uh, 5k yeah. COVID time hasn't quite uh, been, been reached <laughs> since but uh, yeah. well, hopefully hopefully get back there someday yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. are you a flick on man are you, are you a finisher or what are you uh, finisher, up, finisher. Big, big man up top stick it up high <laughs> ah. crouchy over there crouchy over there <laughs> <laughs> crouchy yeah yeah, yeah 100% but I've got an next league of Ireland striker beside me is this the smaller guy so it's smaller kind of like, guy. Oh, okay. that helps making you look yeah. good makes yeah. it yeah makes it easy <laughs> it helps. You know? Shane thanks a million for coming in again and we'll yeah, catch no you down the track thanks a lot